Hi, welcome back to the Radio Mechanic. In a previous video, I showed the operation of the MFJ1026 noise and interference canceller and uh, gave a brief rundown on its operation. And I promised at that time I'd show you some modifications uh, to the unit that I made so that I can run it with a high power amplifier and without burning it up. And I'll also cover the warts that I discovered when I took this thing out of the box. One of the first things you're going to want to do when you buy one of these is move the jumper from the two pins here on jumper number two and move them over to jumper number one. That connects the external, uh, external antenna connector or the auxiliary antenna connector to the SO239 on the back of the unit. As it comes from the factory, it's plugged in here for the whip antenna that mounts here through the cabinet. And unless your plasma TV in your own home is the problem, you're probably going to be using this with an external antenna. The internal antenna does work in some applications, but most of the time it doesn't have enough gain. We'll also show you how to install this relay, which protects the preamplifier from the RF coming back up the sense antenna when you transmit. In my case, this is the little lamp that's used as a fuse. And this schematic, partial schematic here, shows you how it's uh, connected up. The antenna connector comes in, goes through the lamp as a protection through two back-to-back -back diodes and then off to the transistor or the FET for the front end of the preamplifier. Adding this relay grounds the antenna during transmit and opens up this circuit so this is no longer connected. The problem as it comes from the factory, the instant you transmit, this lamp glows intensely bright. Uh, I thought I had a flash bulb inside the unit when I first turned it on. There was so much light leaking out through just the uh, openings along the edge of the cabinet. I, I cannot believe I didn't burn the bulb out. My antenna, my sense antenna, is actually, or was actually, uh, about 75 feet from my 160 meter dipole. And when I transmitted with about a kilowatt, this thing just lit brilliantly. I mean, intensely white. I did one transmission and then converted it over to this relay, and we'll cover that briefly. When I took this thing out of the box, the first thing that was wrong is I could not thread my PL259s onto the SO239 connectors, and I don't know if it's visible in this photograph or not, but there was so much extra plating on these SO239s that the PL259 connector would not thread onto them. And I spent about half an hour with a power rotary tool and a very stiff wire brush wearing down the rough surface you see in the photograph so that the PL259s would slide on. And once I'd done that, then the PL259s went on. The second issue I had was with this RCA connector right here. Whoops, let's see if we can get that into the shot. The second problem was with these this RCA connector right here. This is for the transmit receive control. This goes to your uh, transmit receive control on the back of your transceiver. I built a box that interfaces the back of my transceiver with up to six different items and I have an output for my HF amp, an output for my six meter amp, I have an output for a couple other pieces of auxiliary equipment I have and I can also switch this circuit off and on. The problem was I couldn't get the RCA jack to plug in and it's probably not visible here but in this photograph you can probably see how melted and distorted the plastic is around this connector. What I ended up doing just to get the RCA plug to go in was to warm up this solder joint enough to soften the plastic and then force the RCA plug in. After that I could get the RCA plug to seat. Whoever soldered this had just melted the uh, plastic. While I was at it I powered it up and tested the transmit receive relay and this is just floating at 12 volts through a resistor 
and you ground this terminal to switch over to transmit. Well, I grounded the other end of my cable, and the little yellow relay here did not change, did not engage. I said to myself, I have a bad cable. I went and got another RCA jack cable, plugged it in, grounded it. The relay still didn't change. That's when I discovered that this red wire right here, which is supposed to go to the switching circuit, and again, here's a partial schematic of how that operates. Instead of going to the connection for the switching circuit, this red wire was connected over here to this ground terminal. So basically, I was grounding the ground and did absolutely nothing. So that was non-functional. So we fixed that problem. Now, as to adding the relay in, again, take a look at this circuit here for the switching. Now, if we take a look at this partial schematic for the relay switching circuit, you can see there's a 2N7002, which is a little SOT23 package, tiny little guy, rated at 300 milliampers at 60 volts. It's an N-channel trench MOSFET. And to do the switching, the control line is simply pulled low uh, by the keying relay in your rig. And when it does, it engages the relay. Now, this is the relay that they're using in this unit to switch between transmit and receive. That's handling your 100 watt transmitter, and that scares the bejesus out of me. The contact ratings on this thing are one ampere. It seems to work, but uh, you certainly don't want to drive any more than 100 watts through that. The coil pulls in, or the coil current on that relay is 16 milliampers, actually 16.7 milliampers. And the relay I s selected over here to ground the line for the antenna, I have 25 milliampers. So 25 and 16, I'm not even at 50 milliampers, and the transistor is rated for 300. I did put a diode on here so that there's no back EMF from the coil. And even though the, the MOSFET's protected and there was one on the board, I always like to put a backup here so that there's nothing going down there going to spike the transistor. We come in from the auxiliary antenna connection to the common contact. And during receive operation, it goes from there to this contact through this lamp fuse and down to the preamplifier. As soon as the transmit is engaged, the contact switches over here to this ground and directly grounds the input from this auxiliary antenna. I guess I could have put a big resistor in there. I've had no ill effects doing this. The, the sense antenna was a good 60 feet away from my transmitting antenna. So I felt comfortable just grounding it. And that seemed to take care of everything. And the, the unit was in operation for about two years before I could get my utility company to come up here and take care of the problems. It never failed. It worked flawlessly that whole time and I did a lot of operating. So I guess that about wraps it up. Find yourself a relay with a coil rating of you know under 100 milliampere should be fine. Heavy duty contacts because you're going to be grounding anything that comes up this line is going to go directly to ground. You don't want the contacts to burn up especially if you're running more than a thousand watts. Again, I'm not real comfortable with their selection here for a relay, but it seems to do the job. Make sure that this line is on the correct position. Change your jumper over. You should be good to go. I should mention uh, one more thing. In the partial schematic I drew of the keying circuit for these two relays, I didn't mention that there is an RF detect circuit on board on this board. I do not recommend using that at all. I recommend or almost would insist use the keying line. Even the manual that comes with this says to use the keying line and not to rely on the RF circuit or the RF triggering circuit. That's there as an emergency backup should something go wrong with this line, you forget to plug it in, the cable goes bad, so on and so forth. Hopefully 
the RF sensing circuit will take care of switching this thing over but they even MFJ in the book explicitly says use the keying circuit I always do I don't trust these RF sniffing circuits they're usually a little too slow they'll work for a while and something fails guess that wraps it up short and sweet that's what I did do this it'll survive your linear amplifier make sure that the jumpers in the right position again and make sure this wires in the right place and you should be good see you soon